yesterday we were speaking about the medical camp and the magic which comes in after all all of us want this magic in our life we want something by which we can magically transform ourselves our situations our surrounding our problem vanish away so what is the methodology to bring in this magic yoga is one of the ways and given how fickle our mind is how frail and fragile our bodies are the ability of our selves to perform higher yogic practices is reducing so what do we do is there any way out and that is where swami ji brought out this aspect of yoga initially he brought out the classical aspect in the classical aspect you you can say that you do yoga on the mat although that is not specifically true yoga is a vast subject which touches every sphere of our lives all the time but to make a beginning we need to start on the mat but after starting on the mat we cannot just stay on the mat after all how long can you practice yoga an hour two hours three hours four hours but after that you need to go and perform the commitments the duties the activities which one is required to so how can we maintain the beauty the energy the bliss the happiness which we feel when we perform yogic practices that is the skill of living yoga and one of the simplest and most effective way is reaching out to others there are multiple dimensions in this first dimension is the dimension of social benefit it's a very simple truth that if the gap between the haves and have nots goes beyond a certain critical limit then those have nots are going to invade our homes and snatch from us what we have been keeping away from them of course i do know that individually none of you would be that way but in the larger context that is what is seen to happen and they will snatch it away much like what happened in the french revolution if we don't want that to happen then we need to take care of them and swami ji said that they are the load bearers of the society in purusha sukta that it is said that the purusha is of four parts the brahmins form the head the kshatriyas arms the vaishyas the waist and the shudras the legs of course we need to understand them in the context it these terms were intended not in the corrupted form which they are used now brahma janati iti brahmana those who know who experience and who are engaged in the pursuit of knowledge are brahmins not only those who have a string around their shoulders 
which they can use to scratch the back or hang a key. No, they are not Brahmins. Socially, they might be. But on a spiritual dimension, they are not Brahmins. Those who engage and are immersed in the activities of knowledge, especially the transcendental knowledge, they are Brahmins. Those who use their strength to maintain the structure of the society, to empower the weak, to stand up for those who can't stand for themselves, to ensure that the law and order is maintained. They are the Kshatriyas, not only by birth. Those who engage in different merchandise and trading, they are Vaishyas. And those who engage into activities which need skills in your hands, they are Shudras. None is better than the other, none is worse than the other. That is a corruption. That is a Vikruti which has come down later on. Let us not worry about that here. Swamiji said that that class of society which actually takes care of all of us, they are the load bearers. Our legs are the load bearers of the body. If the legs don't function, oh, body can't do anything. Very recently, a similar thing had happened. The staff who was responsible for clearing out all the garbage, they went on the strike. And in less than three or four days, the whole city was stinking to high heavens. Why? Because garbage was not being taken out. We are the people who are generating the garbage, not they. They are the people who are taking out the garbage so that we can enjoy. Oh, so nice, so sweet, so beautiful. I'm so smart. I'm so this, that, the other. And it is our duty to take care of these people. When we engage in helping each other, then together we uplift each other. So that is the first dimension. The second dimension is the use of this activity as a spiritual activity. When you do that, then there is Karmakshay. I have created lots of karmas, lots of debts and credits in my past. I need to get rid of them. Only then will my lenses, the filters clear away and I will see the light. I will have the grace in my life. When you do something selflessly for others, without expectation of any return. None of us who went to the medical camp at Pune expected that, oh, they will come, they will garland us, they will say, oh, great, you have come. You have... No, 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 no. I have come, I have done my duty and I have been happy that I have been able to get an opportunity to do my duty. That's all. And next dimension, whatever I do, I do to perfection. Yogaha karma su kaushalam. Karma yogaha karma su kaushalam. Perfection in action. If I am registering, it has to be the perfect manner. If I am maintaining the traffic, it has to be in the correct manner. In with sensitivity, with alertness, with awareness, with anticipation. 
if I am handing out yajna prasad, I must do it with love, with care, but not getting involved with I am giving. No, I am the medium of giving. This is not an intellectual thing, but this should come from the core of our being. And mind you, that's not easy. I'm sure many of us, when we were in the camp, there were incidences when there was a lot of irritation, frustration, anger which came in, but it didn't manifest anywhere. If the same thing had happened to us in a different situation, it would have manifested. But here, there was a higher goal. And so, we were able to overcome that. That energy was diverted, channelized, harnessed into a constructive approach and we made a change in our life. This is how we convert a social activity to a spiritual activity into a, an activity of becoming the medium of divine grace. One of the names of the Lord is Patita Pavan. What is Patita Pavan? One who cares for those who are downtrodden. Because God knows we don't have anybody else but divine powers themselves. And therefore, they are always worried about them, looking out for chances and opportunities to bring those people up. And when we offer ourselves as a medium of that energy, in whichever form, we are able to do, then that grace flows through us. And when grace flows through us, there is purification within us. There is transformation. There is breakthrough. That job which I never was able to get, everything came, but there was a small gap. Everything was fine. My interview was perfect. A, B, C, D, E. It didn't result into an action. If we want that breakthrough, we need that grace. And to be able to get that grace, this is one of the simplest methods. Very effortless. Because you are engaging the mind into something which the mind inherently likes. Helping others is an activity which the mind loves. And when we offer that to the mind, we engage mind into that activity, mind stops playing its tricks. It goes into a different mode and we get the benefit. That is the spiritual aspect of seva. That is yoga in action. That is yoga of the heart. That is serve, love, give. Purify, meditate, realize, be good, do good, be kind, be compassionate. That is the eightfold path of yoga given by Swami Shivananji. And it is something which each and every one of us can do. No matter how young, how old, how strong, how weak, everybody can do it. There is nobody who cannot do it. Ah, only those who don't want to do, won't do it. This is the yoga for today's times. And this is also bhakti yoga. Bhakti is not just praying. Bhakti is uniting. And the way to unite comes through seva. So this is what we need to learn. This is what we need to understand. This is what we need to experience if we want that breakthrough in our life. Keep this in mind and go ahead with your duties, your activities, trying to imbibe these principles in our life and see the beauty, the magic of divine grace coursing through you. Hari Om Tat Sat, Namo Narayan.